What's going on everyone? Shilly's videos here, or videos Shilly here. We're gonna take a look at something called, I don't know if you've heard of this, but you know me, I like to teach a shit that's really uh, going on. This is called the Three Red Lines and the American Narrative. The American Narrative part I threw in, just saying. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and this is one of those things this year, the whole Evergrande nonsense. It's just been noise, in my opinion. I haven't really covered it much, and I'm thinking I probably should have uh, at some point now. But, uh, yeah, oh yeah, overlooked it. It's just one of those things, I hear everyone talking about it, I'm like, I'm going to avoid that shit. But anyways, let's take a look at this, but real quick. Let me just tell you the repeated problem that I see in the community. And don't forget, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So basically every idiot with a YouTube channel and a Twitter regurgitates US media headlines day in and day out and amplifies the voice of shills and fake actors by failing to vet them into the community. And these people are not pretending to be anything other than apes. They're trying to fit in and they're trying to always, every time they come in with some awesome idea or some post or article some appeal to authority and it gets taken by basically with you know no problem every time but what people are trying to or what I'm trying to get people to understand is and sorry I'm very baked right now these youtubers are handpicked by these media companies who then use them as a platform to amplify their narrative and how you feel really changes nothing about this fact. I mean, I've been telling you all year, I mean, it doesn't change anything. That's why it keeps happening. At some point, you're going to have to do something about it. And the thing to do is to think for yourself. That is literally all you have to do. I mean, do you think that I knew all, where all this shit was at the beginning of this year? No, I had to learn. I had to, I had to feel my surroundings and adapt to this environment and learn what the hell was going on. I thought that's what we were all doing in the beginning, in January. They were like, do this, DD. I was like, okay, we will do. And I just never clocked out. I've just been going ever since. Just do your own research. Or at least, if you don't want to do that, at least, at least evaluate the research you are presented. Because your time is precious. And although you think I'm a P word, I'm simply just a R word who is ugly as F word, a little autistic and baked. But I do value your time. And I think that that's proven based on the content that I've released and you know the general length of my videos. So I do value your time and try to present relevant information as accurately as possible, so please take that for what it's worth. Anyways, let's go ahead and read this shit now. So the three red lines, um, China's new three red lines policies for the real estate sector will likely drive a wave of re-ratings for developers and open up opportunities for bond investors. In short, the policies amount to forced deleveraging to improve financial health for the real estate sector. Improve financial health for the real estate sector. Now the government is moving to address debt buildup in the sector and we have high confidence in the scope of these policies. Future access to financing will be predicated on developers, adherence to strict criteria, including liability, to asset ratio of less than 70%, a net gearing ratio of less than 100%, and a cash to short term debt ratios of more than 1x. So, again, in short, the policies amount to forced deleveraging to improve financial health for the real estate sector. Now, China imposed the three red lines guidance on selected developers after an August 2020 meeting in Beijing that occurred against a backdrop of growing debt levels, rising land prices, and booming sales. As a part of the scheme, 12 pilot developers must submit detailed reports of their financial situation for evaluation by regulators led by the People's Bank of China, China Central Bank, and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development, the state construction regulator. The regulators are to assess the developer's finance situation against three criteria, which are the three red lines. Now, the three red lines again, number one, liability to asset ratio of less than 70%, a net gearing ratio of less than 100%, and a cash to short term debt ratio of more than 1x. If the developers fail to meet one, two, or all of the three red lines, 
regulators would then place limits on the extent to which they can grow debt. And here's a table that explains that in a little bit more detail. So here's the color code scheme, and it is as follows. Color code, green, number of red lines breached are zero. Allowable annual growth is 15% annual. Yellow, one line has been breached, therefore only allowing a 10% annual growth in debt. Orange is two red lines breached or 5% annual growth in debt allowed. And then if you breach all three of those red lines, um, you have 0% allowable annual growth in debt. This policy, or this policy move, is, in our view, likely to grow in scope in 2021. And we expect it will expand to cover the top 30 and 50 developers in early 2021, and then progressively grow in coverage. So think about what this sentence just said. They expected this to happen. They expected it to grow. And they also expected it to progressively grow in coverage, as we've seen. The policy move is, in our view, likely to grow in scope in 2021. And we expect it will expand to cover the top 30 and 50 developers again in early 2021, and then progressively grow in coverage. They're telling you right there. This is from the same banks that tell you that there's a crisis. Three red lines, why and why now? <laughs> so these are the five reasons why they're doing this. Number one, to control house prices. China's government is mindful of the market rise in house prices. They're mindful. That has occurred during the past 15 to 20 years, which has made property unaffordable for millions. Number two, manage land markets. Higher in prices, higher land prices feed into home price growth. Developers are partly responsible. Many aggressively suck up land parcels to build their land banks and bid up land prices. Number three, to ration credit to the real estate sector. I'm not going to read it verbatim. If you want to pause it and read the rest, it's fine. But basically, you have to ration credit to the real estate sector. Um, the Chinese real estate markets are highly cyclical. The government wants to stabilize the markets by bringing in what they describe as a long-term mechanism for the real estate market. And lastly, number five, the real estate developers are systematically important. Real estate is a significant part of China's economy with strong linkages to numerous upstream and downstream industries. The Chinese government is thus putting stricter controls in place to assure a more sustainable future. So again, the goal is to be more sustainable, but they're going to have to weather the storm that they know they're creating. So the three red lines, what do they mean for developers? In short, the forced deleveraging. They're in China. It's a communist country. According to S&P estimates, only 6.3% of their rated developers can fully comply with all of the three red lines at the time of writing. And you're gonna shit your pants when you see the time of this writing. So at the time of this writing, basically no one could comply with this. So obviously there's going to be a lot of shit going on, moving around as far as <laughs> compliance to meet these new three red lines. So they expect a tighter credit environment over the next 12 months at the time of this writing. They've already seen moves from the Chinese authorities to dampen the growth and credit seen amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And we expect gradual tightening of select financing channels, like trust loans, for real estate sector over the next 12 months. Against this backdrop, with the imposition of the new rules, we expect the developers may respond by cutting prices, controlling their debt growth under mostly supervision by the central authorities, seeking operational cost efficiencies, and disposing of assets or stakes in businesses not related to core property development. We also expect that many smaller developers will be forced to move out of the industry and that the sector will become increasingly dominated by larger players like, you know, BlackRock, Fidelity, and Vanguard, the ones that have been buying up everything in China all year long. While the media has been saying, don't invest in China, China's this, China's that. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's what everyone's been regurgitating on YouTube because I bet most of you don't even know what the hell this is that I'm reading. But this is policy that's happened already. And again, they've just outlined this entire year basically saying, yeah, we expect this shit to happen. But at the same time, you hear crisis and the world's ending. 
So the outlook, I mean, they believe it's a positive market development for bond investors in the long term. From a valuation perspective, current levels are highly attractive in the real estate space. China is tightening up the financing channels after opening them in the height of the COVID-19 outbreak. And coupled with the introduction of the three red lines, China's developers will be under pressure. They will be under pressure over the next 12 months. However, and this is the most critical sentence of this entire presentation, this is where active managers with a China presence and a deep on the ground understanding of the real estate sector have an edge in capturing the re-rating opportunity. That's all this is. By the way, this was written in January of this year. So, yeah. I mean, without the hype, what do they have? Nothing, right? So they have to stick to the hype. That's all it is. So, have a good one, y'all.